Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. So on this video I have my Mini Cooper here, the 2001 um, the R50 and uh, I'm gonna be changing the heater matrix so this here is the heater matrix now the reason I'm gonna change it is because um, I hardly get any hot air coming in the car um, a little bit comes on but not much and uh, it really takes a long time to get even a little bit of warm air inside so I am I am um, thinking at the moment that my heater matrix may be corroded and blocked or maybe if anybody used uh, some anti leak coolant leak um, stuff in the past that can sometimes block the matrix so that's what I'm gonna be changing now to change that matrix uh, first thing I'm gonna do is drain the coolant so to drain the coolant in this case I'm gonna get the car up and then I'm just gonna disconnect one of the pipes that will hopefully um, drain the coolant out so looking at the car from underneath um, I'm going to disconnect that hose over there that's connected to the radiator and that should drain our current off so I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna use one of these pliers which holds the clamp in and keeps it there okay Okay, so as you can see, that clamp just pulls back and I can actually leave the pliers there, I think. Hopefully they won't interfere, but what I want to do is now pull the hose out. Okay, so I'm just going to let that drain and then we can move on to removing the matrix. And actually, once that has drained, um, you can just go ahead and uh, refit this hose back in there. We're not really going to do anything else down here. Okay, got the hose back on, clamp back on. Now we concentrate on the matrix. Okay, so inside of the car, in the um, here in this case on the passenger side, um, we have down here this cover. We need to remove that cover in order to access the matrix. The matrix sitting just behind there, just here. Now I already removed a couple of screws. These ones here, they have a Phillips head in there, but they are also um, a six mil. They have a six mil head on them. Now I'm aware, I think other mi minis of the same age have a different, uh, different screws. They might be Torx. T20s or T25s. Um, now there is another screw in this car, <laughs> in this cover. So I remove those two, and you can actually remove the cover. But uh, there is another one that is hiding in somewhere up here. So I'm gonna have to try and get to that. I'm gonna try to use my six mill here and hopefully I'll try to get to it and then uh, maybe I'll film 
where it is where more or less where this is going but otherwise we can't really see it from anywhere here so the only way is to um, try to get it and then take it out so it's a bit of a guesswork um, so I'm gonna try and get that one out the other two so you'll find one in this hole here and the other one will be just up there so those two are easy to see um, so this I'll try to get that one out I managed to use that set there with the uh, universal joint here in order to get to that bolt I mean well that screw which finally has come out and we can hopefully get this up now somehow <laughs> I think I had it out but uh, maybe I need to lose it a little bit more um, the way you will find the screw is actually if you feel with your finger <coughs> up here there's a little like a groove there's like a round groove you can feel and if you go with your socket in into that groove the bolt is sitting right at the end of that groove so as soon as I can release this we'll, I'll show you the groove I thought I was ready to take it out but clearly not <laughs> okay um, the screw actually was out just uh, to take this out you really have to it's, it's just getting stuck yeah, a little bit, um, just up there, with this area, it gets a little bit stuck there and it's hard to take it out, so you really need to basically pull it out a little bit savagely and it should come out. Now what I wanted to show you here is the cover is in there cover is in there like that and you have this bit here that you can fill with your finger sorry that bit there is like a little round groove there you can fill with your finger and your uh, socket will go straight in there and get the bolt now putting the, that bolt back in might be something we might not actually do <laughs> um, I think it'll be easier to put those two back on and leave that one alone unless you want to spend 10 days trying to fit that back in um, so it's up to you uh, if you want to fit it back in I think I'm gonna have to leave it out but now we have that out there I got my three little screws there um, I have an allen key here which is a size 3 that is going to fit on this clamp this clamp for that pipe there well I think that is going to fit in there yeah so we can release those clamps but uh, just before releasing those I'm also going to undo this uh, six mil um, bolts that are holding the matrix in place I never actually change one of these on a mini I have changed one of these on an E36 BMW which is quite a similar arrangement the matrix is sitting in the same position so we'll undo those that is going to release the heat matrix 
so we can pull it out. And uh, these are the clamps. We have two of them. One there and one up here. They shouldn't be, they won't be too tight really. But uh, you may want to get an Allen key that you can just uh, loosen the first bit and then uh, you'll be able to just undo it. My Allen key is a little bit small, <laughs> but the uh, problem is it's the only one I have of that size. So I just need to loosen these clamps a little bit. And we can release them. And obviously having finished doing this one. And take that out as well. Okay. Those are out. So you'll be able to pull this out. And now we can open this clamps a bit. They kind of hold the pipes together. And obviously I am actually also using one hand <laughs> to try and film. So it might be a little bit faster once you do it with your two hands. I think we pretty much get the idea here so I'm just going to release that clamp there and also get a small sort of bucket in here in the area so you can catch the coolant that there might be a little bit of coolant in there that we're gonna need to collect it might be not might not be a lot but uh, just a little bit so get something some kind of container to catch it Okay, managed to get the clamp off. Now, if you pull this out, it might be a little bit tight to get these pipes off, but uh, we can only try. <laughs> there you are. It'll be easier, um, again, if you're using your two hands so you don't have to get too much coolant on the carpet. And uh, same idea for this one up here. I just wanna separate the pipe. Um, kind of separating a little bit already just with the movement of this in itself but again I may need my two hands to take that one out so I can pull from one side and push from the other get it out and uh, just drain whatever coolant may come out of there onto your container as well so I'll go ahead and do that now. Right, so it wasn't that 
difficult. It definitely just needed my two hands so I could pull that out. Again, a bit of coolant here. Um, right, let's get this out. And uh, note the o-ring there. The other o-ring, it's in the pipe here. So we're gonna have to just take it out of there as well. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that this somehow has to be blocked because no heating comes into the car and a little bit of heating comes on the passenger side and, and nothing on the driver's side so perhaps this is only going up to halfway there so now I'm just gonna prepare the area I'm gonna remove that hose I'm gonna clean those pipes a little bit with some uh, emery paper or something just uh, clean the corrosion and uh, also we can prepare, we've got the new bits here so we can prepare our pipes and everything for the refitting session okay so a couple of things to notice here um, I'm just fitting the new one here I haven't really fitted it in yet but um, you may notice that when you push re de depending on the make that you bought when you push that in there it might not fit it might not fit and if you look at the back of this uh, plastic cover here where this goes in you may find this um, plaster form that has got the uh, if you look at the shape of this it's a bit uh, obviously it's a little bit bigger the thing is uh, is that I removed it and it sort of broke into a few pieces but if you look at the the shape and if you look at the old uh, matrix it's got that shape so this slides in there really nicely <laughs> and it fits to the edge however if you put the new one in you may find that it doesn't slide in because um, the back of this matrix which I didn't show you um, doesn't have those grooves so you have to basically remove that to be able to fit that matrix in there and so it really depends on the make that you buy perhaps buying the genuine uh, one would be better because uh, this particular one wasn't really that expensive but um, clearly is not as to be honest I, I can see the fitting is not as good already so um, maybe get a, a genuine one and the other thing is that in the kit in the kit I found obviously the clamps and then I found these o-rings two of these as well as these other ones the ones that uh, actually came out originally so I'm not sure you actually have to you actually have to fit the o-rings uh, I'm not sure why they they're in there maybe different models have slightly different fittings so newer models or or something like that may actually have o-rings instead of these other uh, rubber rings um, so I gone ahead and fitted one of them down here and the way I fitted it is basically if we look at the one at the top which I haven't done yet um, originally I was trying to fit it like this but I can't quite do that so I think the best way to do it is to get your o-ring put some a uh, little bit of grease on it and then fit it onto the matrix into the hole of the matrix and then um, so now it's sitting there nicely and then carefully clean uh, these pipes obviously I clean these pipes so I may clean this one a little bit more 
but put a little bit of grease on here or WD-40 or something that makes it slide nicely and carefully push it in, in the center there um, and I say carefully because when I was trying to do this one the one at the bottom um, it kept pushing it kept pushing the o-ring in in so if you don't get it right you're gonna have a leak there and you don't want to damage the ring either otherwise you're gonna have to get new re new of these new rubber rings so um, that's basically what I'm going to do so from this point on I really need to my two hands I can't have uh, I can't be filming um, I think it goes without saying now just be careful clean the pipes properly so they can slide in nicely I need to clean that pipe a little bit better and um, and then obviously fit your matrix in there put the screws that hold it in place and then uh, it will be a matter of getting some coolant in the car and run the car uh, before we put the cover that covers the the heater matrix um, because we can check for any leaks also obviously hopefully we get some hot air in here but we can check for any coolant leaks from those pipes because if we have any then we have to fix that we can't go like that so um, so be careful so this this the refitting part is a little bit crucial um, just put the things back together um, with take your time patience use a little bit of grease and uh, hopefully all should be well so um, I'll see you at the when I start when I put the coolant in okay I got the heater matrix in and now I'm gonna top up some coolant now this engine I've tried to work on bleeding this type of engine before and I struggle a little bit to be honest I'm not exactly 100% sure what the method is to bleeding this properly but um, normally uh, what I do is there is a, a bleeding hole here so I'll just put some coolant in there until I fill up that area there and also I got the radiator here so I'm going to fill that up and then we can fill this container so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill those three areas there um, and see how we get on I'm using a the coolant I'm using is G48 uh, recommended for this car it's blue uh, coolant um, so that's the one I'm going to be using so I'll start by filling this area then the radiator uh, well this bit here that is goes into the um, I think that kind of goes into the thermostat area and then I'll do that okay so I've got some coolant in there also I noticed that while I was popping this up and filling this up with coolant a little bit was coming out of there um, so slowly fill that up slowly fill a little bit in there it seems to fill the same system and then I got some in there and now I'm waiting uh, I'm waiting for the car to warm up a little bit always monitoring the temperature inside of the car um, like I said I can't really quite guide you on how to bleed this engine even I don't know but uh, so I don't want to be responsible for any um, damage you can cause to the car so but what I would recommend you to do is to keep an eye on the temperature gauge and get your heating inside of the car on and uh, because we want to run the car until it's hot uh, and we have hot air coming inside and we also have uh, at some point the radiator fan will come on uh, and that way we know that the system is circulating um, completely and also obviously we, we don't want to have any air air in the system so you will also know that you're getting rid of the air once you have hot air coming into the car 
And the other important thing is to make sure you, don't, you haven't got any leaks around the heater matrix. Um, but like I said, I'm not an expert on bleeding this system. Uh, I think I've done one of these cars before changing the coolant and I don't even, uh, I don't remember exactly how I did it, but uh, it, it was okay in the end, but um, but I but I, I did, it took me a while to do it, so um, just using different methods. Um, even um, another thing I noticed with this particular car is that once you run it and everything seems to be working, even the heating inside, um, once you switch it off and you check your coolant the, the day after, you will notice that that tank will go down and then you need to top it up. Um, and that may happen a couple of times, which means the system is kind of leaving itself, but uh, it's not, uh, but it's taking that time to do it. So as it cools down, it seems that to suck some of the coolant from the uh, suction tank. So again, I'm not 100% sure how to do it, but um, what we want to do is just make sure we have no leaks in here and also we want to put this in the hot position switch on the fan and wait for some hot air to come through but keep monitoring that keep monitoring the temperature i switched off the car a few minutes ago and that's already showing hot well, not hot, but it's already halfway. But it's halfway because it's uh, the engine is probably getting hot, but it's got no coolant cooling it down, and that's why we need to be careful. So anyway, keep monitoring that, and then I'm gonna keep monitoring that, and I'll come back once I get some results here. Right. So far, I've been running the car for a little while. And uh, I can feel already. I can feel the nice hot air coming inside of the car. So before it was really cold. I I could hardly get any hot air in here. Not even hot. It was like it was cold, sort of. A little bit of heat but nothing else now um so i've been running it for quite some time like i said the air in here is really nice and hot so i'm happy with that clearly that has solved the situation and um i've got no leaks here because uh, coolant is already going through these pipes and it both pipes are hot so if you if you feel the pipes you will feel that both of them are hot and uh, also you can see there's no no coolant leaks here so now I am able to fit the cover there and we have finished with that area however I'm still technically uh, running the bleeding of the car and uh, my temperature is in the middle there so I'm just waiting for the fan to come on basically I'm just gonna rev it up a little bit so this is basically what I'm going to do I think I'm going to end the video here because like I said I'm not an expert on bleeding this car but I'm gonna rev it um, monitor the temperature here wait for the fan to come on and then once the fan comes on if the temperature goes up here I will switch the car off because I don't want any issues then let it cool down and check the coolant maybe tomorrow morning however if it doesn't overheat I will get the fan going let the system do its thing and again switch the car off and then um, check the coolant tomorrow and top it up 
Okay, uh, my coolant is just, uh, my fan just come on, but I know that by tomorrow morning when this car cools down, I know that coolant will go down a little bit as it settles. Um, so I'm not too concerned that I got it up to there, because the maximum is actually a little bit lower than that. The max line is just down there. Uh, so tomorrow morning I'll check it, it will settle down and I may need to top up a little bit but at the same time it may just settle right at the max. Uh, so having said that, um, I hope this video helps, um, don't forget to subscribe and I uh, will see you on the next video, thank you for watching.